thanks for watching my previous video on scope and red flags. Leave a comment on this video with your definitions of those terms if you want to test your learning. This video on herbal preparations is about familiarizing you with some of the herbal jargon that I'll be using throughout the rest of this herbal first aid training. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on to different types of herbal preparations that we'll be using in our interventions when we've assessed that something is within our scope and there aren't any red flags. Thank you. Um, and I need to make sure that I can see that. All right. Um, so starting out here, we have oils first. And um, I'm referring in this instance to um, oils that have herbs infused into them. And I'm curious if anyone can help define is that better? Um, essential oils as distinct from infused oils. I could try. Thank you. Um, so an infused oil is like a, you know, amount of um, a, an oil, like olive oil or whatever, where the plant has been left in and the constituents are like pulled into the oil from the plant. Um, and an essential oil is where um, a plant has been, I don't know the technical term, like reduced essentially, or like it's been heated in such a way that like the um, volatile oils are separated and like isolated mm -hmm. um, and so they can be pretty strong. Totally. Yeah, thank you. That's a really great summary. So um, I'll just repeat um, a version of what you just said too. Um, so infused oils are when a plant has been infused into an oil such as olive oil or sunflower oil um, using either heat or time or light, depending on the plant and the method you're choosing to use for it. And then for, to make an essential oil, you need a still. They're highly concentrated, um, only for external use. Um, and you also need to be careful with their application because they need to be diluted in either like a carrier oil or a honey um, or something like that. Um, and essential oils are, <laughs> Things. I can't not be distracted when my TA is helping me. Um, yeah, so an essential oil can be really nice in combination. Um, I do think they're more useful for first aid than a lot of other types of herbal prep, uh, herbal disciplines because they um, are really shelf stable and really portable. Um, but you do need to remember that if you're planning to use it, you'll, can, you'll need something to dilute it with um, before using it externally. And then um, hydrosols are, uh, hold on one second, I just need to get my view back. Okay. Yeah, so hydrosols are also known as flower waters, and they're similarly produced uh, through a distillation process, a lot like essential oils, but they're um, they're much less concentrated than essential oils. So we can use hydrosols even internally um, and uh, they can be really awesome for our first aid preparation as well. And who knows what a sap is? I can give a working definition of a salve. Um, it's usually a blend, yeah, of a, an infused oil and beeswax or something else to give it texture um, or to help preserve it also. And then, um, yeah, I don't know what distinguishes it, but it's a way to use oils topically that mm -hmm. is hydrating and healing. Totally. Yep, you got it. Um, sometimes I feel like it's like, when you're like, oh, I have to make a definition, it can like seem like you don't, it can feel more complicated or like maybe you don't know, but you know, that's exactly it. Um, it's an infused oil combined often with like 
something that's solid at room temperature like beeswax or a butter. Um, and it helps make it more portable. It also helps make it even more nourishing for the skin. Um, and then in a first aid context, you can reapply salve every six to 12 hours, depending on um, what you're using it for. Um, so I use a lot of salves in first aid. Um, I'm going to just bring my screen down so you can keep seeing my list. All right, what is a tea? Okay, I'll just do tea, but I am gonna ask draft. So if anyone knows draft, get ready, because you're up next. Um, so a tea I'm referring to, um, a tea is you know not the most accurate way to refer to it, but uh, it's a good shorthand for infusions and decoctions, which is when um, a plant is extracted into water as the solvent. Um, they can be made and used warm or cool. Um, and once you've, made an infusion or a decoction, it's stable for 48 hours when refrigerated um, in a first aid context. So I use a lot of teas for compresses or washes, um, can be really soothing as a part of um, care for certain injuries. All right, is anyone brave to take on what the hell is a draft? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just be the teacher because that's my job. <laughs> um, but yes, let me know if you're feeling, I, I try to you know, have a participation just so that it doesn't get too boring. So just so you know why I'm like tapping on you all the time. Um, so please let me know if you're starting to like glaze over. Oh, cool, a quick infusion. Um, yeah, you know, uh, that could be a way to define draft. I love that. So a draft is a powdered herb, either a single or a compound um, of herbs that's meant to be mixed into warm water for an instant tea or an instant soak. Um, so it's very portable, again, um, especially if you're like doing care for people who are living outside, um, for example, um, or at like a, in a street medicine context, like outside um, for many hours of time. However, it has a pretty short shelf life. Powdered herbs, um, yeah, they're just not as shelf stable as other types of preparations. Um, and so you've probably, if you've already, um, you might've used a draft before in the context of like traditional Chinese medicine. I know they use a lot of powdered herbs. Yeah, um, yeah, so a draft is a powdered herb, either a single herb or a compound herbs, and it's intended to be mixed into warm water for instant tea or um, to use as a soap. Did um, the, the second round definition come through? Cool, um, excellent. And so uh, this one we talked about a little bit already and uh, it's a poultice. And um, do I need to be aware every time the screen goes dark? No, okay, cool, I'm just checking. Um, and a poultice is using dried, powdered, or macerated fresh plant material mixed with warm water or tea and applied directly to the skin. Um, so some people might be familiar with like a sock poultice, for example. Um, like uh, if you have ever put a bunch of rolled oats in a sock and then run a bath through it, then you have uh, like an oat poultice. Um, so I really like using clean socks um, for poultice just because it's something that people often have around um, their home. But also, yeah, the uh, poultice, could it be mixed with oil? Um, I don't see why not, um, but it might be a little bit of a waste of oil um, because I think of poultices as kind of like a short-term preparation and oils, like you really want to like rub them in um, and have them there for a while. I don't see why not. If, if you can think of a specific example, um, I can speak about it a little bit more too. Um, if I didn't fully answer your question just now. Um, so yeah, poultices are really great. Um, it's a really lovely way to have um, direct contact um, with the herb on your body or the person's body who you're helping. And um, in terms of the difference between like a spit poultice and another kind of poultice, it would just be like if it was an herb like plantain that you is edible, you can like chew it up in your mouth and apply it to the area where you have the injury. 
Um, and I just would not do that with anyone who I'm not fluid bonded with. And if I was um, trying to make a poultice for someone who I wasn't fluid bonded with, I would be um, chopping it up on a clean cutting board with a clean knife and uh, mixing it with a little bit of warm water or tea um, or tincture um, potentially. Which leads us, um, we're, we're making our way to tincture. First we have um, powder, which is uh, pretty simple. It's just a dried powdered herb. And um, powders, uh, like I said, they're not stable for a long time. So if you have one in your kit, I recommend um, changing it out every few months for optimal quality. And a tincture is an herbal extract in an alcohol base. Um, sometimes it can be in a non-alcoholic base like glycerin. And tinctures can be used both internally and externally in a first aid context. When you use a tincture externally, it is called a liniment, even if it's the same exact thing. Um, but because a lot of times the alcohol we make tinctures with is like, um, is more expensive. I don't tend to use tinctures that are safe for ingestion for external uses just because I would rather use something like rubbing alcohol as my solvent, um, which is a lot cheaper than something like vodka, for example. Um, but yeah, I uh, definitely use tinctures a lot. And then plasters are um, when you use a powdered herb um, and make it into a paste and apply it onto a light cloth which is then applied topically. Um, so for example, uh, plasters are often like a mustard plaster or something people have been um, often introduced to growing up or like a ginger plaster, which are for um, chest colds, um, warming the chest area. Um, but you don't wanna put them directly on the skin because uh, herbs like ginger and mustard will burn the skin when applied topically. So a plaster is a good way to protect the skin and still get the medicine. What's the difference between a draft and a powder? Thank you for that question. Um, a, there isn't a difference except that um, powdered herbs could be used um, internally or externally and a draft is specifically intended to be used internally. So with the plaster, the herbal paste is on the outside, yeah, of a cloth and then the cloth is like between your skin and uh, the herb. Yep, something like muslin. Um, it's often used for plasters. And the fun thing about them is you can like make a bunch in advance and then um, drafts are used internally. Uh, yeah, the plasters, you can like make a bunch and then just dry them out and then like rehydrate them as needed. Um, and a liniment, um, here we are almost at the end of our list. Um, so it's often in rubbing alcohol, so it wouldn't be safe to ingest. Um, so external use only. Um, but yeah, you could, if you use the tincture externally, it's a little bit. And then lastly are compresses, um, which can be used, um, cold or hot, depending on the situation. If you want, um, I think it was soap, not soap. Hold on, I'm just catching up on the chat. Oh, I think I can pop it out. That's better. Yeah, draft can be used to make a soak. Yeah, so that would be an external use um, of it. Yeah, I guess maybe draft and powder are synonyms, and I just hadn't ever really thought about it. So um, yes, it was soak, not soap, and also, um, yeah, it might be kind of arbitrary distinction between a draft and a powder. Um, and so it's like helpful sometimes just to know these fancy herbal words in case like you're looking at recipes or reading in books and you're like, what the hell is that? So I just want you to know. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, a compress is when you soak a cloth in an herbal tea, um, or you can actually use the plant material itself if you have that, um, and then it's applied topically. Um, and yeah, there's often an element of like using temperature with compresses, like a cool or a hot compress, depending upon what you're treating. Are there any questions about um, these different terms? Distinguish between a compress and a plaster. Sure. Um, well, a plaster is technically a kind of compress, but a compress isn't always a plaster. That's one way to try to describe it. Um, 
And uh, like, for example, I, a compress that I use a lot is like with chamomile tea. Um, and so chamomile tea, like it's totally fine for the tea to make contact with the area that you're compressing it. So like if I just soaked a cloth in chamom cool chamomile tea, I could put it on and I'm not worried about it making contact. Whereas with um, a mustard plaster, like I really do want to protect the skin um, while it's still he helping access the medicine of the mustard seed. What's an example of a liniment? Um, I have um, here, my primary example of a liniment is Arnica liniment. Um, so this is, yeah, Arnica flower in rubbing alcohol. And um, you can see it has a skull and crossbones on it because it is a poisonous low dose herb and also it's in rubbing alcohol. So it's for external use only. Any other questions about preparations? Is it okay to ask on the mic? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I just wanted to clarify when you were saying that plant material can be a compress, I'm, in my mind, I'm picturing like taking a bunch of the plant material and like patting it right on your skin. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and then so that would be a poultice, right? If you just had the plant material on your skin. But then if you add a cloth that has like either a cold or a warm property to it, either from just water or from like tea as a component um, and wrapped it around the plant, then it would be a compress. So the cloth is what brings it to the compress. Yeah. Gotcha. And in the plaster, the cloth is what's touching the skin, not exactly. the plant material. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Definitely. Great questions, everybody. All these like old terms, <laughs> but they are helpful. Um, what's the difference between a plaster and a, a poultice? Are they variations of pastes? Um, great question. Um, so plaster and a poultice. So a plaster is also, so a plaster is kind of queer, right? It's like, it's kind of a poultice and it's kind of, um, what was the other one we were just talking about? Oh God, hold on. <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, kitty interruption moment. So it's kind of a plaster and it's, it's kind of a poultice and it's kind of a compress, but it's its own thing. I think the main takeaway that's important about plasters is it's for any type of herb that you're worried about irritating the skin, that's what you're gonna be using a plaster. So a lot of the herbs like ginger and mustard are gonna be used for like opening up respiratory access, um, really like warming the area, but um, yeah, in, in a way that won't actually cause like injury to the skin in the warming process. Um, so for, um, and poultice, it's not necessarily a paste. Um, like you could make a poultice from a powdered herb with water or a powdered herb with a tincture and that would make a paste that is, could be used as a poultice. However, you could also just have chopped up fresh leaves with a little bit of water, which uh, is also a poultice and isn't a paste. Does that make sense? And then like pastes, um, for example, to make a plaster, like you would mix like powdered herbs, like with like wheat flour or something like that to make a paste because you wanna apply the paste onto the cloth and then dry it so that you can, um, yeah, have it be shelf stable and available for when you need it. Cool, great. Um, and feel free to keep asking questions even if we've moved on to it. I'm Bruna Morshaw of Well Deep Remedies. Leave a comment below about what you learned from this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out the caption for a link to sign up for my mailing list for more free educational content from me, a disabled femme clinical herbalist. The herbal first aid class handouts that accompany these videos are also linked in the caption and available for purchase. Visit welldeepremedies.com for more. Thank you and ta-ta for now.